Welcome everyone to our Resource YYC Lunch and Learn. So that you are aware, Resource YYC is a co-working community geared to professionals. We offer our Lunch and Learn sessions as a means for our community to network and provide meaningful learning opportunities. We also provide private office spaces, dedicated desks, day drop-ins, and virtual office options. If you're not yet a member with us, we encourage you to check out our website and follow us on social media. Today, we have Neville Chamberlain, uh, the CEO of Brightworks, where he, uh, he is an independent professional, helps independent professionals build their businesses faster. Over to you, Neville. Rosemary, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to run through the presentation here. I've got about 35, 40 minutes worth of presentation. Um, there will be lots of room for Q&A at the end. So uh, bear with me while I put the wheels in motion here. And I think you should be able to see my screen right now. And I'm just going yes. to reorganize things just a little bit here. <clears throat> so this is an introduction to email marketing, but just to give you a, a very quick um, view, uh, very briefly about me, I think the first thing and probably most important for me is that you should know that I'm a geek. <laughs> um, I grew up as a software developer, and that partially explains my geekiness, but it also, I think, gives me a little bit of an advantage when it comes to systems like email marketing systems, because I am a technologist, I can use these systems uh, to probably uh, more than they uh, have been designed for. But I've also run two uh, companies uh, in the past, both of them with uh, revenues in excess of $10 million, one in Canada, one in the UK, and uh, the one in Canada was actually a turnaround. I've been a solopreneur since about 2011. And today I specialize in helping solopreneurs build a profitable business and specifically solopreneurs who provide a service. So these are people like consultants, uh, coaches. I have people like interior designers in my uh, client list, uh, people who really provide a service to their clients and are primarily running either their own business as a solopreneur or with a small team. And today I want to cover five things. Number one, just what is email marketing? Number two, why this is the best way to nurture your leads and eventually make sales. Then we'll take a quick look at how it works, but more importantly, what you can do with it. Um, because once you know how it works, uh, there is a ton of stuff. You can get really, really sophisticated with email marketing. And then finally, how do you get started with email marketing if you've never been into it before? Um, so with that in mind, let's start off with what is email marketing? And you've already been subject both to marketing and to email marketing. You saw the marketing for this particular event, uh, probably on uh, something like LinkedIn, but you also got emails from Resource YYC, and that is part of their email marketing. So you've already been subject to email marketing just by fact, by the fact that you are here in this presentation today. So email marketing really is about dating your customers by email. Now, dating by email is not particularly <laughs> an attractive thing, but the point with any kind of dating and when you're working with new clients is that no one wants to get married on a first date. Um, but if you can date them over a long enough period of time, then eventually something might happen. You know, all the stars align and all that stuff come together. So today you're effectively meeting me for the first time. And hopefully someday, part of the reason I'm doing this, quite frankly, is this is part of my marketing efforts. But maybe someday you might become one of my clients. But how do you get from here to there, to that maybe someday? And it's exactly the same. When you meet a potential client for the first time, you're in exactly the same position. And obviously, the worst thing that you can do is to ask them to buy your stuff on the first date because they don't trust you, they don't know you, they don't know if your value is there. So to go from today to maybe someday, I need to do three things and you need to do three things with your clients. Number one, you have to build trust. Yeah, I have to get you to trust that I'm the real goods, I'm not trying to scam you. 
The second thing is you need to learn and understand that I know my stuff. I actually know what I'm talking about here. I'm an expert in this particular area. And then the third thing that's really important, how do I get you to remember me a year down the line or two years down the line when you're really in the need for buying something like this? One of the stories that I very often tell people is that you buy a house, which is for most of us, one of the biggest financial transactions ever, but you never hear from the real estate agent again. But when you talk to real estate agents, they will tell you that they get most of their business from referrals. So why don't they stay in contact with people, you know, even just once a year, anniversary of when they sold the house, that kind of thing. So that remember me bit is obviously very important. So chances that we'll meet again, either in a presentation like this are pretty slim. But if you sign up for my email list today, <laughs> you're going to learn a lot of valuable stuff. And that valuable stuff, the stuff that I send people by email over a long period of time is designed with three goals in mind. Number one, I want to build trust. Number one, I want, number two, I want to establish my authority that I actually know what I'm talking about. And number three, I want to stay top of mind because nobody is ready to buy when we are ready to sell. So, Email marketing is effectively a conversation with potential clients. One of the things that sets email marketing apart from other kinds of marketing is that email marketing is with their permission. You have to get somebody's permission to email. Once you have that permission and you can start having a conversation by email, you can build trust, establish your authority and stay top of mind for the day that they are ready to buy. So that's really what email marketing is about. Now, I want to look at why this is the best way to nurture your leads and make sales. And one of the things that I want to compare this with is social media. And my statement right up front is social media sucks. And here's why. If you want to have a conversation with your client on social media. You have to be on social media all the time because they're not there all the time. Chances that they're going to see it in their feed is very small. The biggest problem is, is that there are thousands more of us out there trying to do exactly the same thing. So getting noticed in all of that noise, the signal to noise ratio, if you like, is very, very small. So email, of course, is one to one. So when you're having a conversation with your client, that email gets delivered right to their inbox and they've given you permission to email them and they can read it whenever they have to. Nobody reads all their emails all the time. Most of the time people will just delete an email that you send them, but it's in their inbox. So they have the discretionary time to do it. When you go and look at some of these statistics, this is a uh, research and a survey done by a company called Opt in Monster. The staggering numbers 3.8 billion people on email, 3.4 billion on social media. It's probably more, uh, more than that now. I think this survey was done a couple of years ago. But some of the important things here when you ask people what their preferred way is of receiving promotional material, Email is three times more preferred. 60% of people prefer email promotional or informational material over social media, which is only 20%. The conversion rate with email is a heck of a lot better as well. So when somebody actually engages with you, either on email or on social media, 6% of people will actually convert into clients less than 2% over social media when the conversation was initiated over social, uh, social media. But the thing that's absolutely staggering to me is that return on investment. For every dollar that you spend on email marketing, and this is across all industries, right? For every dollar that you spend, you're going to get $44 back. Social media return on investment, actually really difficult to judge. Uh, no one really knows what the ROI is. And you know, I've, I've done the research as well. What's the ROI in social media? And you get so many different numbers from different places that you don't really know. When I look at my own stats, um, I've been doing email marketing probably now for about three years. My average open rate is close to 44%. My average 
click rate when somebody either needs to click through to an article or something that I'm offering is almost 9%. So that's even better than these uh, particular stats that the guys have here. So the bottom line here is that email is better than social media at engaging with potential clients in all respects. And if you like, I can talk about other channels to market a, a little bit later in person and stuff like that as well. Email marketing is way, way better. So that is why email are email marketing is the best way to nurture your leads and make sales. So let's take a quick look at how it works. And this is a very, very basic uh, description. The first thing that you have to uh, understand is that email marketing is done through an email service provider. MailChimp is an email service provider. ConvertKit, which is the one that I use. These are all companies that provide email services to you, and almost all of them are a so-called SaaS platform, software as a service. In other words, you, there's no software to download. You sign up for a monthly or annual subscription, and you log on to their platform, and that's where you manage all of your email marketing. Common people around MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, if you Google email marketing service provider or just email marketing, you'll find hundreds of these people pop up because it is a really hard thing, especially in the times of COVID. People have realized they can't do as many in-person things again, so they go to email. So the very, very basics of how this works, your e you will use your email service provider to create a landing page or a form put it on your website. And when somebody signs up for that, you can capture that subscriber's email that goes into a database and that name lives there. Once you have that name, you can send emails to them and you can track what they do. And this is probably one of the exciting things. Um, you can you, you will know when they open an email. You'll know when they clicked on a link. You'll know when they purchased something from your website. And all of those things allow you to then get really sophisticated. And at its heart, all email marketing systems work like this. Yeah, there's an underlying database and they've added a ton of features around this so that you can do really cool stuff. So that very simply is how it works. I'm not going to go into a lot of the technical details here, but what's probably a little bit more interesting is what you can do with it. So if you go to my website now, brightworks.com slash EMA 101, EMA is email marketing automation. This is part of the website that you will see. And you'll see there's something called an email marketing primer on the right. And there is a place where you can fill in your first name and your email address. That is actually part of my email marketing system. So that when you go and fill in that form, you will actually get the this particular lead magnet, but then you're in my database. I know that you're interested in email marketing. So now I can follow up with that. So the very first thing that you can always do with email marketing is you can offer a lead magnet so people can sign up for your emails or, or like they want to learn something. And the, the example that I've just shown you was um, the email marketing primer. So if you're interested in email marketing primer, you would sign up there. You can also get people manually, you can put them manually onto your email list. And I've done this in the past where I asked for permission, or rather I asked for forgiveness rather than permission. And my first email to people is always, hey, I'd like to add you to my email list. Here's something that I think of value. If you want more of this, just click below just to make it easy for them to say yes and easy for them to say no as well. But once you've offered them that lead magnet, you have their email address, then you can go and say thank you and add more value. And this is one of those key things that um, many people, when they start out with email marketing, they, they, they've heard about this lead magnet thing and they create a landing page and people download it, but they don't actually follow up after that. So very often, one of the best things you can do if you have a special report or you have something that you can offer potential clients as a free download, follow up with that. It's the ideal opportunity to expand on what you've offered them, but steer away from trying to sell stuff. 
because one of the top reasons people unsubscribe from emails is because people are always trying to sell them stuff. So that's one of the key things that you have to try and avoid. Um, here's another example, sell a product or service. Now, these email marketing, the email service providers all give you a way to create a sales page and sell something, but a sales page on its own is often not enough. So now the power of these email marketing systems come in. You can offer a lead magnet. You've seen an example of that. When somebody downloads that lead magnet, they're in my database. You can follow up with additional insights and information about that particular topic. Tell them more, give them more in, uh, in, inside tips, tricks, or just insights from the industry that you're working on. And now the power really happens. If they're reading your emails, you can eventually then offer your product or service or ask them for a meeting to talk about what you're doing. If they're not reading your emails, then it just stops. They're not engaged. Yeah. And this is one of those really powerful things, because what you've just done here is you've qualified your leads without having to spend time qualifying them. That's absolutely critical to understand because we spend so much time trying to find leads and then qualify them. And in my experience, qualification takes time. If you do that in person, it's going to take ages to qualify people. So if they're reading your emails, you can actually measure the number of times that they read. If they go above a certain threshold, you can offer a product or a service or just even a meeting invite. And if they purchase or book a meeting, you can say thank you. And you can follow up with them for as long as you like. You can follow up for a year after the fact, if you like. If they don't purchase, they don't buy, you can offer them a quick survey. That's what I do very often. Um, in my lead nurturing and sales pitches, if somebody doesn't buy, I've got a one-click survey. Send them an email with three or four different options saying, hey, can you quickly help me out? Why didn't you buy? And the options are really, it's too expensive. I don't have time right now. I don't need this and whatever else it might be. So now I'm learning from people who sign up for my lead magnets why they don't buy. And that knowledge is extremely powerful because now I can start tweaking things so that I get more people to eventually buy. So here's a bottom line. All of this can happen automatically. You don't spend time on it. Here's another example. Higher end consulting, higher end products. With high end consulting or products, you always have to spend more time interacting with your customer, but you can still save a lot of time. So you can, for example, you can automate your lead nurturing. You meet someone somewhere, a networking event online, um, have a coffee with them and you ask them, hey, I'd love to send you an article about something that you might find interesting. Manually add them in and you can then send them you know, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. You can even vary those times. You can send emails just to remind them that you have something, knowledge or expertise that they are going to find interesting. So articles, insights, valuable content, you drop that out over the time. The next thing that you can automate is the welcome and onboarding process. So when somebody signs a contract or somebody signs up at resource YYC, yes, I definitely want to have an office in the space. You can automate all of that welcome and onboarding stuff. And typically for a consulting kind of business or a high-end product, one of the things that I did when I was consulting is I had a little form that they had to fill in as soon as they signed the contract hey, here's a form. Can you get your admin assistant to fill in who I should be emailing for invoices? What's your emailing or your invoicing procedure? That kind of stuff. And all of that stuff just goes off your plate because the email marketing system is now actually doing that for you. And once your contract is complete with a client, and I've got this set up as well with my consulting clients, and I actually personalize this based on the project work that I did with them. So people automatically hear from me three months after the fact, six months later, and a year later, and maybe a year later after that, so that they always know that I was around and hopefully I did 
a good job for them. The bottom line here is that you can give your customers a better experience without having to spend more time on creating that experience for them. Um, one of the things that I always talk about is something called evergreen nurturing. Um, one of the problems that you face when you, when you start with email marketing is you know, people think you have to send an email every single week to people. Um, I have a series of articles that I've written over the year and I've set them up in a sequence called an evergreen nurturing sequence that once everything else is complete, I've either pitched a product at them or they've downloaded a lead magnet that go into my evergreen nurturing sequence. And there's a number of things that are important about these evergreen nurturing sequences. Very simply, it's a series of emails delivered over time. And you can decide exactly um, how frequently those emails get sent out. But each email has to be relevant irrespective of when it's sent out. So when you're doing something like evergreen nurturing, you don't want to send them, hey, happy Christmas, if they joined in the middle of the year. But the key here is that everyone gets the same series regardless of when they joined your list. So if somebody joins in January, they start at email one. Someone joins in July, they start at email one as well. And they all get this valuable series of uh, emails with valuable, hopefully valuable content to them that builds that trust, establishes your authority, and keeps you top of mind. And this frees you up from having to create content all the time. Um, people are still going to hear from you even when you're on vacation. And you know, hopefully when you come back, your email will be full of leads. Um, here is, and I know this slide is a little bit small, but I want to give you a little bit of insight into the state, the art of the possible, if you like. This is my internal documentation for a completely automated hands-off online business selling, off, selling info products, courses, PDFs, that kind of thing. There's a number of entry points. All of those are forms that people fill in on my website. And it's either just a newsletter or they inquire about a product or they sign up for a lead magnet. Then there are custom workflows associated with each one of these. And there are hands-off pitches. Every 90 days, I pitch a different product at someone, something that they haven't purchased before. And then there's a whole bunch of evergreen newsletter stuff at the end of that. Um, if you're really interested, I can show you the, the details of this in the Q&A part. But the point is you can, if you really want to get into this kind of technology and you have a little bit of a technical bend, you can set up a large part of your business to run absolutely automatically. So that's just a brief idea of what you can do with it. So to get started with it, there's a couple of things that you need to know about. If you need to know more about this please, by all means, uh, go and download that email marketing primer. In fact, and I have to put a little caveat around here, I literally finished that uh, primer yesterday. Um, so this is hot off the press. Usually, when you download the primer, there will be a series of emails following up on that, explaining some of the finer points or some of the things that I've learned that are not necessarily in the primer. That is not there yet. So if you download it now, um, I will tell you when, uh, when the, uh, the course is ready, uh, when, the, when the rest of the emails are ready, and you'll get those insights. But right now, you won't get it. The first thing that you're have to, going to have to do is you're going to have to sign up for an email service provider. Um, from experience, my recommendation is a company called ConvertKit. Um, they have a really nice balance between the features that they have and ease of use. MailChimp is definitely out there. Constant Contact, Aweber, you just have to do a little bit of research. I have extensive experience with two. ConvertKit is one. Drip is another one. Um, ConvertKit is probably more geared towards the solopreneur, small business people. And then you're going to have to learn some skills. Um, you're going to have to learn how to use your ESP platform. 
And the one that is probably the most difficult skill that a lot of people uh, put barriers up against is how to write engaging emails. And some people specialize in doing this. Other people have to learn it the hard way. But those are the two things um, that you have to do. And just a quick note, if you do download the primer, I'll let you know when the, the course that I'm developing, which is for pure starters, uh, when that course is ready. So three things that I'd like you to take away from today. Number one, email is one of the best ways to qualify your leads and nurture them and stay top of mind you know, without having to spend more time doing it. That lead qualification to me is probably one of the most important things. And I'd like to say just one more thing about that while, while we're on that topic. In the marketing world, uh, there are two big types of marketing. There's something called outbound marketing where you go out to customers and you say, hey, would you be interested in buying a bridge? Um, that does not work very well because you haven't, you haven't qualified those clients. There's also something called inbound marketing. Inbound marketing is where you publish articles or speak at conferences. This, for me, this session is inbound marketing. So I'm putting my stuff out there. The people who actually download the lead magnet are coming into me. They're already partially qualified as interested in, as being interested in email marketing. And that is way, way, way better because they're already qualified. I know that when they come, they're interested in this particular topic. The second thing that I'd like you to take away from this is that automation is a huge, huge, huge time saver. It takes all that work away from when somebody inquires to have to respond to them and um, people just generally get a better experience, especially if they're downloading something online. If you're a high-end consultant, you'll be doing less of that. People might be contacting you personally, but you can still automate a lot of that process. And the third thing that you have to take away from this is that you will have to invest the time to learn the platform and skills. But I can promise you now from experience, this pays off handsomely for a long time to come. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. I'm going to stop presenting here and then open it up for Q&A. All right. Well, thank you very much, Neville. So uh, it was great of you to join us and give this presentation. So we're going to keep going with the questions now. And Pleasure. we'll stop Thanks, the recording. Thank you.